the Holy Ghost. Amen. In today's liturgy, we see the necessity of making our faith grow in the waters of truth. But before we can grow in truth, we must understand clearly what is meant by the seed and the soil on which it is to germinate. Now, in this morning's office, the divine office, we read in Matins how Noah heard the word of God and started to build an ark. This ark took him a long time to build, a hundred years. And during this time, you can imagine those people ridiculing him, laughing at him, telling him these things are not going to happen, and yet he is unshaken. He continues on to build the ark. Twenty-five years pass. Nothing happens. Fifty years pass. Nothing happens. Seventy-five years pass. Still, nothing has happened. Yet Noah's faith is still unshaken. These people were just like what our Lord said in the Gospel, how their faith was. Those by the wayside, those like the thorns on stony ground, But when it did happen, and when Noah did go into the ark and seal it up, then what? The awfulness of the flood came upon them. They would not believe. They didn't believe in the beginning, and then when it was too late, their fear destroyed what little faith they had left. Now, in today's epistle, it's kind of like a prophecy of our Lord's where he says, the seed fell upon good ground. Look what all St. Paul went through. Look at all the sufferings that he went through just to proclaim one man, one person, Jesus Christ. Shipwrecks, scourging, starvation, everything, all this just for Christ. Now we come 2,000 years later to our time. The walk to salvation is suffering because God ordained it in the beginning after the fall. He saw Way back then, the road that the Word of God was going to take. But our suffering has to coincide with our humility and with our simplicity. For our Lord also said, if you do not become like a little child, 
you shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. So we have to remain simple and humble. Not puffed up, not arrogant, but simple. Now those other people who mocked and ridiculed Noah were completely given over to the sins of the flesh. But Noah saved the human race because if he did not enter the ark there would have been no one left. Now this faith also is bound up in our love for God. We were created for a purpose. The purpose is not relaxation and pleasure. For we are taught clearly that it is to know God, to love God, and to serve God. Let us break away with the present or what is presently in front of us, what we see, how we, our pleasures. We must look beyond these things. We must look for our heavenly place, the heavenly joys of heaven, that the Lord himself has said, the eye has not seen, nor the ear heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man, what things God has in store for those who love him. See, the whole point is love. And it is taught in our holy rule, which for the religious is just as much for the laity, that he who despises God's word will be destroyed. But we will not be saved without cooperating with the plan that God has set before us to be saved. Yes, it's true, He created us without our cooperation, but He will not save us without it. We must participate in this plan of redemption which our true model has set before us we must pray we must offer up our sufferings and make much atonement for our sins and for the sins of the world or are we too proud to pray or do we think, well, we have time to make amends. We still got years, we're still young, some of us. But what about those poor people that were killed in the tornado that struck down in Arkansas? Or the countless thousands that were killed in the severe earthquake in Columbia, South America? God is not going to wait forever for man's heart to change. He's got all our time set. And if we don't work, our, work out our salvation 
within his time frame, then who are we who are we gonna blame for what happens? For our Lord said also, be prepared, for your time is always at hand. He says, watch and pray. All these are little warnings, little helps to keep us on our toes so that we do not become relaxed, so we do not forget why we are here. So we live up to that supreme point of faith. Instead of loving self, we give up self and love God. This is the work that we have to do. And with the upcoming problems, if they become problems, it's hard to say, with the computer crisis, but still, even if all this happens, we must not do or follow the poor example that was given during the Depression time when people are literally killing themselves because of this problem. God will cause us to suffer, but not over above our ability in anything. So with that, please pray for us as we do for you every day at the altar. And always try to keep God in your heart and on your minds. So while you're constantly keeping his presence in front of you, you'll be able to avoid all the evil that's outside of you. God bless you. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.